Well, hey there. Okay, so this is the story of how I accomplished my life. It was my life dream for like two or three years. My obsession is Chipotle. Um, I love it quite a bit and I go there very often. I used to go there more often. So for the longest time, my, my life goal was to go to Chipotle and buy a margarita. I was like 15 when I got this obsession and I couldn't get a fake ID, first of all, because I look like I'm a middle schooler <laughs> and second of all, because I'm not like badass enough to get a fake ID. I live in Connecticut, I don't know where I would have gone. I could have just like walked into the ghetto and be like, give me a fake ID and I would have gotten shot. My chance to get Chipotle margarita finally came last summer actually. I was in Paris with my mom, except I was really afraid that like she would find out if I tried to get a margarita at Chipotle. So I was somewhere else before and she was somewhere else. So we flew in on different planes. So I was like in Paris alone for the first 24 hours. And that was scary as shit too, because I learned later on that when you take French in high school, they don't teach you shit. <laughs> like, I could not understand what anybody was saying. I got there and people would like talk to me and I'd be like, come and see you say what? And I was just like, fuck. I got there the first day and I was there by myself and we're staying by the opera, which is like, I don't know what I'm gesturing to, it's just in France. And then, so Chipotle is on, it was on Rue de Richelieu. Oh god, why do I remember this? It's on Rue de Richelieu. <laughs> I'm, I tried to memorize the directions before I went there, but I am very, very directionally challenged. So, it didn't work. There was an ordeal when I was trying to find my hotel and I couldn't find it and I was like in the subway alone. People weren't helpful and I couldn't find my hotel. And I remember my dad texted me and he was like, I was only allowed to text my dad because he didn't want to pay for other texts. So he texted me and he was like, I had been walking around Paris for like an hour or two trying to find the hotel and he was worried about me. And he texted me and he was like, are you at the hotel? And I was like, yeah, I'm at the hotel. Cause I didn't want to like freak out. So I just told him I was at the hotel. And then I was walking around Paris in the rain with my suitcase. And I almost cried because I couldn't find my hotel. So I got to my hotel and I dropped off my suitcase and then I was like, I'm so hungry. I need food, and I know there's Chipotle here because I checked and I've been looking forward to this for months. So I looked, I had Wi-Fi, so I looked up um, the directions on my Wi-Fi and took a picture of the map and started trying to walk there. And like, I got lost for a while and it was not simple. People don't speak English from Paris too. People say they do, but they don't. Um, so I was walking down the Rue de Richelieu where I knew the Chipotle was and felt like I could not find it. And finally in the distance, I see the big Chipotle sign. And it is not like Chipotle's in America. First of all, it is like two stories. They have like the first story and then they have the upper story, which is like a big glass paned window. So you can just like, it's like an overlook as you're eating overlooking Paris and it's the coolest thing. So I got there and their door kind of looks like the Apple store, which is like a big glass box. And I couldn't figure out how to get in. I was kind of like, I was like feeling around their door because I couldn't figure out how to get into their building. I was just like, I just need Chipotle right now. So I was like feeling the door and I thought it was an automatic door and like fine, people were looking, it's a glass door. So people were watching me. Um, but finally I got into Chipotle, and I went up to the counter, and surprisingly enough, the only people who pretty much spoke English in Paris were the people working at Chipotle. <laughs> it was pretty fucking amazing. I wanted to live there. It was like heaven. I did not want to go back out. But, so I go to the counter, and I ordered my taco, which I always get the same taco. It's like steak tacos with guac. Um, so I ordered my tacos, and I'm going through the line, and I finally get to the end, and she's like, the girl's like, do you want anything else? And I was trying to think. I was like, hmm, like, do I want anything else? And I was like, um, how about a margarita, maybe? <laughs> and I wasn't sure, like, I had that, like, you can't do that here. So I was like, I was expecting her to, like, ask me for an idea for her just to be like, LOL, no, <laughs> you can't have alcohol. But she gave me my margarita, and I was really excited. It was in, like, a Chipotle cup. So I took my food, and I went upstairs, and I had to, like, set the moment for this, like, this was my, like, literally my life dream for three years. I have never had a life dream for this long. Like, actually, like, this is a hundred, like, I'm not even joking. This is my longest life dream ever. So I went to the window and I got my Chipotle and I sat down and it was like the perfect scene. I had margarita and my tacos and like life was complete at that moment. So then I get ready to try my margarita. So I'm like trying the margarita and it tasted like fucking shit. <laughs> it was literally, it was literally terrible. I did not fit. I tried to, I drank like half of it. I was, I was like trying to drink it. I was like, I cannot deal with this. This is terrible. So I had like half of it. Um, it was, I like, no, it was awful, but it was my dream and I still felt accomplished. And then I had to leave Chipotle and go back to Paris to a hotel room alone where nobody spoke English and there was no Chipotle. And that was pretty depressing, but it was all worth it because I got my Chipotle margarita. And I guess life was kind of complete then because I really haven't had a, like, that was, that was my life went downhill because I, like, that was the peak. I'll never, like, accomplish a life goal after that, but, like, it was, like, it was good. Thank you for that. <laughs> Okay, so moral of the story, the French are awful, but they have very lax laws. So if you want to do something frowned upon in the United States, go to France. Um, peace out.